Ever wondered why some expressions even insulting ones become so widely accepted in our society? Our language is powerful and influential, shaping how we perceive ourselves and others. One such term that has wormed its way into our common parlance is resting bitch face, or RBF for short. This term is often used to describe an unintentional facial expression that comes across as unfriendly, aloof, or simply unimpressed. It's a label that many have been saddled with, often without their consent. The face in question may just be one at rest, minding its own business, yet it's labeled with a term that carries negative connotations. This just goes to show how language can mold perceptions and propagate stereotypes, so how did this term become an accepted part of our everyday language and why should we reconsider its use? The term, resting bitch face, believe it or not, has its origins in pop culture. It all started as a viral internet meme, a humorous image or video that was shared and spread rapidly by internet users worldwide. This particular meme was a snapshot of a person's face, seemingly unimpressed or annoyed, labeled as a resting bitch face. This term quickly gained popularity, becoming a common phrase in everyday language. It's a testament to the power of the internet and its ability to influence societal norms and language. But it's also a reflection of our increasingly digital society, where a single meme can spark a global trend. However, the term itself is a derogatory one, reducing a person's facial expression to a single negative stereotype. It's used to describe someone who appears unfriendly or indifferent, even when they're simply at ease or deep in thought. But as this term gained traction, it also sparked a debate about its implications. Have you ever thought about the other side of the RBF coin? What if the audience is the cause of this face? It's a thought-provoking question, isn't it? RBF, or resting bitch face, has traditionally been seen as an inherent facial expression, a default state if you will. But what if we've got it all wrong? Consider this. Maybe RBF is not so much of a default expression but rather a response to the observer's behavior or attitude. Perhaps it's the world reflecting back at us, a mirror to our own actions, our own attitudes. This view flips the narrative and puts us in the spotlight. It challenges the accepted understanding of RBF, positioning it as a reaction rather than an action. It's a perspective that requires us to take a step back, to reevaluate our own behavior and how it might be perceived by others. So, RBF might not be just about the person wearing the expression but also about those perceiving it. Why has our society normalized the use of insults like RBF in everyday language? It may seem like a harmless term, but its acceptance reflects a deeper issue, a lack of situational awareness and empathy. It's easy to label someone with RBF without understanding the circumstances or emotions that may be causing their expression. This casual dismissal of others' experiences is a symptom of a larger problem in our culture. We're quick to judge, quick to label, and quick to dismiss. But what if we took a step back? What if we considered the person behind the expression instead of just the expression itself? By reconsidering the language we use, we can foster a more thoughtful and respectful form of communication. We can challenge the norm, shift perspectives, and hopefully, encourage empathy over judgment. So next time you're tempted to use a term like RBF, pause, reflect, choose empathy. Remember, language is a powerful tool. Let's use it to build bridges, not barriers.